see on our slideshow what some of our former in-person benefits were like and also our riffs, music and readings as outreach in Boston. Our 10 year anniversary gala is pictured there with writers such as Marjan Kamali, Helen Elaine Lee, Ian Haley Pollock, DeWitt Henry, and many more. We've all had such camaraderie over the past 12 years. We started with the core of volunteer writers, many of whom still are with us, such as Richard Hoffman, Savinia Orlovsky, and Betsy Scholl. And now we've grown to 30 volunteer writers on staff. We promoted many hundreds of authors and photographers with diversity of race, nationality, socioeconomic status, gender, and religion. We've published truly fine work by emerging writers and established writers. You'll also see on the slideshow some of our fabulous photography. Solstice Magazine has had an essay in the Best American Essays in 2018. Uh, it's been cited for notable essays. It's had a Best of the Net Award, a small local mass cultural council grant, and a 2019 CLMP Amazon Literary Partnership grant. Now, however, in order to extend our outreach to Black, Indigenous, writers of color, and to writers on the margins, such as prisoners and people on probation, and to all outstanding writers, we truly do need donations. Help us take a stand for fine lit and social justice as in our recent blogs on anti-oppression because silence is not an option. So let me now say the expected. Please go to chat and click on the donation link you'll see there. It's so easy and quick, so painless to spend your money, yet so appreciated. Plus we're a 501 C3 nonprofit, so your donations are even tax deductible. Also, you will notice a chat link to purchase our brand new winter issue with cover photo by the famous, fabulous Lou Jones and work by such authors as Terence Hayes, Susan Rich, Artress Bethany White, Abby Frucht, Charles Coe, and many more. Our book table to purchase work for readers is also on the chat. So simply click at the bottom of your page on chat so that you can contribute and also so you can enter comments as we move along because we'd love to hear your point of view. And I wanna give a big shout out to our devoted events committee, managing editor, Amanda Todisco, Riffs director, Savinia Orlovsky, associate poetry editor, Robbie Gamble, digital and graphic lit editor, Dre Wooded, and events coordinator, Kaylin Wu. Deepest thanks. And now, as a prelude to our riffs and part of our effort to also support emerging artists, we wish to kick off with a short original piece by John Kind, a rapper and performance poet who speaks from the heart, as you will hear in Ben Afraid. Thank you to John in advance. Dear readers and writers, I'd like to introduce you to our fabulous Benefit Riffs event. Our Solstice Poetry readers will read one poem each, then we will present our featured poets, Adrian Majeka, a National Book Award finalist, and Richard Blanco, who read at President Obama's inauguration. Interspersed will be featured rap and jazz musicians. It's going to be a real life party, even during difficult times. So now we'll get on with our show. First, I'll introduce myself, Lee Hope. I'm the founding editor of Solstice and also the author of Horse Fever, a Midwest Book Award finalist. And I've been teaching for almost 10 years in the Changing Lives Through Literature program, which brings literature to men and women on probation. 
I'm also thrilled to introduce our new co-editor-in-chief, Brenda Sparks Prescott, an officer on our board, a friend in long standing, who shares our sense of mission. Brenda has worked for years in administration and appeared in publications such as the Louisville Review, the Crab Orchard Review. Her MFA is from the Stone Coast Program. She's a founding member of Simply Not Done, a women's writing collaborative. Her first novel, Home Front Lines, is forthcoming from Bedazzled Inc. Publishing, and you'll be hearing much more about that. So here is Brenda. Hello, Solstice Magazine community. I am thrilled to extend my involvement with the magazine in this new role. I affirm that the very act of writing or art making or interacting with pieces that represent diverse voices is an act of resistance, whether the subject matter is a street protest or a humorous take on love. Let me also say that your presence as writer, reader, art maker, friend is critical to our success. I look forward to collaborating with you as we continue to embody inclusive excellence in literature and art, and as we strive for justice, anti-racism, and equity. Thank you for being here with us. Thank you, Brenda, for your vision and skills that will carry us forward. Welcome, virtual hug. Now we proceed to our performances and to the director of our riffs. I'm honored to introduce another long-term friend, and woman of vision, Savinia Orlowski. She's a Pushcart Prize winning poet, a National Endowment for the Arts and Translation grant recipient, and a founding editor of Four Way Books. Her sixth poetry collection, Bad Harvest, was a 2019 Massachusetts Book Awards must read. Her poem sequence, The Disenchanted Desna, was selected by Robert Pinsky as co winner of the 2019 New England Poetry Club's. Samuel Washington Allen Prize. Here we go with the show. Thank you, Lee, and welcome everyone to the Night Riffs portion of this evening's program. Night Riffs is a Solstice Magazine sponsored biannual reading and music series created to bring together in an intimate club-like setting diverse literary and music talent, both of national reputation as well as emerging. In June of 2019 in Inman Square's Lilypad Lounge, our inaugural event was held to a standing room only audience. COVID has forced us into the back rooms of Zoom, but we hope to celebrate with everyone a re-entering into the physical world in 2021. Stay tuned for our next Riffs event scheduled for May. I'd like to read now a poem from my book, um, most recent book, Bad Harvest, which is available at the book table. Um, and this is a prose poem called Rolling. Late August, a black cat rolling in mown grass flips to its back again, then rolls to its feet, half sun drunk, half whiplash tail. I am loved, not am. I've mastered these tricks at parties after my husband's break a leg rolling an ice cube on my tongue, my eyes rolling over crowded rooms, my body buckled forward, rolling over rolling words. Rolling my eyes, having blood drawn, the vial filling slowly as flood water rising. Rolling through one marriage, then breaking it off, holding up, each of us rolling away into our second marriages, pretending, yes, to be dead. Thank you. It is now my great pleasure to introduce Artress Bethany White. Artress Bethany White is a poet, essayist, literary critic, and the guest poetry editor for Solstice's Winter 2020 issue. She is the recipient of the Trio Award for her poetry collection, My F. America, and the author of a debut essay collection, Survivor's Guilt, Essays on Race and America. Severed, a statement on the ludicrous nature of African repatriation after a DNA test. 24% of my body 
should fly back to Mali. Heir to the legacy of Emperor Sundiata Sogolon Jada, whose mother's twisted body bore a great king as prophesied by a griot to his father. 4% should be sculled back to Norway aboard a historic Viking boat and reunion with my Norwegian folk. 4% should land in Portugal to satisfy genes gained on an early slaving ship when the Portuguese paved the way for English, Spanish, and Dutch expansion of the slave trade. 40% should be removed to Angola before tribal chiefs severed ties with their African brothers. The spoils of domestic warfare sold to traitor outsiders. A final 28% to the British Isles. A repatriation with Scottish, English, and Irish kin. To blame for this lighter skin born from centuries of blending in. Next up is Robbie Gamble. Robbie is the associate poetry editor of Solstice. His poems and essays have appeared in Cutthroat, Rhino, Rust and Moth, and Tahoma Literary Review. He was the winner of the 2017 Carve Poetry Prize. Robbie worked for many years as a nurse practitioner at Boston Healthcare for the Homeless Program. And he now divides his time between Boston and Vermont. Hello. I'd like to read uh, my poem that will be appearing in the new issue of Solstice. It's called A Backlash is Coming. Some chromatic shift on the horizon, or else this oddly metallic petrichor stuck at the back of the throat. Sure, it's perseverating out there, though no one knows what form it will assume. Only that they will be vicious and desperate, and above all, I'm quite gobsmacked in my whiteness that I never registered the blatant image racked within the word. A back, a body, a black body, and the lash coming down on it. Because, no doubt, that back had straightened up too fast and far, and now is flexing into new dimensions, triggering unease amongst my folk, who for four centuries have clung to our reflex to bring the lash down, to bring the lash down, to bring the lash down. But there's no going back. And I'd also like to introduce the next poet. Eva Ruschel is a poet, teacher, and translator. She has three books of poems in English, of Annunciations, Omnidon 2017, Contraband of Hupo, Omnidon 2014, Strata, Emergency Press 2019, as well as three books in Polish, Tobolek, Sopilki, and Furkot. Her book, Contraband of Hupo, translated into Italian by Anna Aresi, came out in Italy with Edizioni Ensemble in May 2019. Thanks. Consider a womb as a bird. One powder blue and fertilized egg, and three bluebird nestlings and we build small stations of dreams. Fecundity, what is it? If I had a child, I would tell it these nesting boxes are about luck and timing. Although best when they just transpire and we can proclaim a miracle and shun meticulous planning. But I tell an invisible child, carrying me through the rivers, that to be the mother of all means to dwell in sorrow and evanescence. 
A mother and a virgin in one is our ideal. So we overcome gravity with tails. And these bluebirds, domesticated partially, reproduce in our hands. Hands of a mother are a cradle and hands of a non-gravitational mother, a boat. Ancient Greeks believed the uterus had suckers. Imagine it as an octopus or a cuttlefish. And that brings us to wetness. The nature of mother and the ocean are one. A womb. Animal within animal. And because we are only able to understand analogically, a womb is also a vessel, wine skin, and a dove. Holy Spirit, fallopian tubes as wings. That's why shamans dress as birds to access the other world. What flutters. And our next reader is Richard Hoffman, the author of seven books. His most recent, Noon Until Night, won the 2018 Massachusetts Book Award for Poetry. He is non-fiction editor of Solstice. Hi everyone, I am going to read a poem about a serious topic. According to the United Nations, there are more refugees fleeing political violence and persecution, seeking asylum that, than at any time in human history. This is about them and about us. It's called The Road. Mothers with newborns in knotted slings, on their heads impossible towers of things, the old in carts, the children by the hand. These people crossing a cratered land are more than metaphor, but they are also metaphor. We are the truth to one another. Look, don't wait for some historian's book to understand this. Then it'll be too late. This is the unchecked power of the state, the end of empathy the rise of Mars, the avarice that in the end mars all our laws and medicine and art. Show me one fleeing person's heart and I will show you a thousand griefs for loves, hopes, memories, beliefs that war has undermined. Corpses plowed under, mined roads and fields, the groves and orchards, poisoned, fathers and brothers, tortured, hope abandoned with the other heavy furniture. It isn't much of a road, the future, if you don't know where it goes or it goes nowhere. And now it's my pleasure to introduce Phoenix Faya, a 15-year-old songwriter, rapper, singer, and producer. He plays the guitar, bass, keyboards, trumpet, and dabbles on the violin. Please welcome Phoenix Faya. Flying while we 
we still are trying to get equal You keep on seeing the obvious in front of evil We keep on trying to keep it just in different keyholes You and me, I see destruction, you see peace That's the difference that I can't understand for the life of me Why won't you fight for me? It's kind of rightfully you're right for me I see these eyes that look at me a certain way It's likely that I'm a certain kind of breed to them Blackberry ready to watch with no hoes, no shows And one goal, death is trying like these limits I'm defying like our ancestors were dying Fear can't blur the lines that we have clearly set aside For a better time, a better generation Got moments set in time, but succeed the hesitation Fail the preservation, to hell with expectations When our brothers and sisters ain't brothers and sisters For it's the point that they missing For it's the coin toss of prison A night child is a miracle Cause they can feel the miracle light Death is trying to take all the tears out of miracles right And pour them in the night sky Hoping to make us cry, man. Pieces fall and pieces die. And people caught and people decline. And everyone's for themselves. It's like the end of the world. It's like the end of the world. Except for you. Our next reader is poet Adrian Matika. Adrian is the author of four collections of poems, including The Big Smoke, which was a winner of the Annisfeld Wolf Book Award and was a finalist for the National Book Award and Pulitzer Prize, and Map to the Stars. Among Matika's other honors are fellowships from the Guggenheim Foundation, the Lannan Foundation, the National Endowment for the Arts, the Rockefeller Foundation, and a Simon Fellowship from United States Artists. His mixed media collection, inspired by Funkadelic's Standing on the Verge, Maggot Brain, will be published by Third Man Books in February 2021. His new collection of poems, Somebody Else Sold the World, will be published by Penguin in July 2021. Peace, everybody. My name is Adrian Matika, and I'm so glad to be here to support Solstice Magazine. I'm going to be reading a few poems from Matt to the Stars. Basketball featuring Isaac Newton and EPMD. I split every bit of sunlight at College Park's ball court, land of sweaty Reebok tees and patriotic wristbands, escalating to the rim like every player on the court would do to the Lafayette Square Mall mezzanine on weekends. Every bit of tangled shine around my neck, a hypotenuse of intentions. Highlights are the only lights in my low-rise space of sneaker to shin and elbow to crown. The only time I dunked, the court exploded like a party here and you got to chill for the first time. And when the smoke cleared, I hung as tight as a sweaty headband on that rim, talking smack to the nine ballers and to their nine mamas. Then the slipping and cracking. Then two months left hand in jumpers, one hand in prom photos, smudged scribbles on my cast, while the basketball rotated as insistently as the backspin and apple that split Newton's wig. If you don't know who EPMD is, you should go check them out. They're also in the next poem, too. Emily Dickinson featuring basketball and EPMD. I read poetry out here, spinning the spindles of happenstance. It's M dashery, like the closed eye of a winking man used for a record needle. I love when the laces of my suede kicks come undone like the best laid plans. And when I cross to tie those boys up, I love savoring the shy glory of my girl's skirted knee. Her stitched hem branching like the feathered stems in a blue bow as she would never wear. 
There are too many boas in this world, and the first feather in their garish elegance, America, home of lovers and EPMD breaking car speakers like high school curfews since 1988, someplace when I loved summer, the dash from one hoop to another, a stray kitten chewing on a moth from the Zionsville bleachers before we fed him a hamburger, and somebody else's business as usual cassette untangling bit by bit like laughs. I probably should have said that those were both sonnets too for those of you who are interested in poem. This is the last one I'm gonna read. It's called Map to the Stars, title poem. A Schwinn right away, Eagledale Plaza, busted shopping strip of old walkways, crooked parking spaces nicked like the lines on the sides of somebody's mom barbered head. Anchored by the Piccadilly Disco, where a shootout was guaranteed every weekend. Coughing stars shot from sideways guns, shiny enough to light the way for anyone willing to keep a head up long enough to see. Man, not me. I bought the Star Map shirt for 15 cents at the Value Village next to the Piccadilly in the daytime. The shirt was polyester with flyaway collars outlined in the forgotten astronomies of disco. The shirts washed out points of light, arranged in horse and hero shapes, and I rocked it in place neither horse nor hero hung out. Polyester is made from polythylene and catches fire easily, like wings near a thrift store sun. Polythylene used in shampoo bottles and gun cases and those grocery sacks skidding like upended stars across the parking lot. There are more kind of stars in this universe than salt granules on drive through fries. Too many stars lessening and swelling with each pedal pump away from the value village as the beaming billboard above first spotlights one DUI attorney and another who speaks Spanish. So the sky above is constantly chattering like the biggest disco ball ever. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Kayla and I'm the events assistant for Solstice Literary Magazine. I'm really excited to be introducing the next poet in our virtual benefit. Selected by President Obama as the fifth inaugural poet in US history, Richard Blanco is the youngest and the first Latino immigrant and gay person to serve in such a role. Born in Madrid to Cuban exile parents and raised in Miami, cultural identity characterizes his many collections of award-winning poetry including his most recent, How to Love a Country, and his memoir, The Prince of Los Cocuyos, A Miami Childhood. Blanco is a Woodrow Wilson Fellow, has received numerous honorary doctorates, serves as an education ambassador for the Academy of American Poets, and is an associate professor at FIU. Let's give him a warm welcome. Say, this isn't the end. Say we live on. Say we'll forget the masks that kept us from dying from the invisible, but say we won't ever forget the invisible masks we realize we had been wearing most our lives, disguising ourselves from each other. Say we won't veil ourselves again, that our souls will keep breathing timelessly, that we won't return to clocking our lives with lists and appointments. Say we'll keep our days errant as sun showers, impulsive as stars falling, say this isn't our end. Say I'll get to be thrilled as a boy spinning again in my barber's chair. Tell him how I'd missed his winged scissors chirping away and my shaggy hair eclipsing my eyes. His warm clouds of foam, the sharp love of his razor's tender strokes on my beard. Say I'll get more chances to say more than thanks, Shirley, at the checkout line. Praise her turquoise jewelry and her son in photos taped to her register. Dare to ask about her throat cancer. Say this isn't her end. Say my mother's wrinkled eyes won't die from the goodbye kiss I last gave her say that wasn't our last goodbye, nor will we be stranded behind a quarantine window trying to see our refracted faces beyond the glare, read our lips, press the warmth of our palms to the cold glass. Say I won't be kept from her bedside to listen to her last words, that we'll have years to speak of the decades of our unspoken love 
that separated us. Say, this isn't how we'll end. Say all the restaurant chairs will get back on their feet. That will all sit for another lifetime of savoring all we had never fully savored. The server as poet reciting flavors not on the menu. The candlelight flicker as appetizer. Friends spicy gossip and rich saucy laughter sharing entrees of memories no longer six feet apart. Our beloved lips as velvety as the wine, the dessert serves sweet in their eyes, say this is no one's end. Say my husband and I will keep on honing our home cooking together, find new recipes for love in the kitchen, our kisses and tears while dicing onions, eggs cracking in tune to Aretha's croon, dancing as we heat up the oven. Say, we'll never stop feasting on the taste of our stories, sweet or sour, but say, our table will never be set for just one. Say, neither of us dies. Many more cheers to our good health. Say, we will never end. Say, we'll all still take the time we once needed to walk alone and gently through our neighborhoods. Keep noticing the zen of anthills and sidewalk cracks blossoming with weeds, of yappy dogs and silent swing sets rusting in backyards, of neat hedges hiding mansions and scruffy lawns of boarded up homes. Say, we won't forget our seeing Every kind of life is a life worth living, worth saving. Say this is nobody's end. Or say this will be my end. Say the loving hands of gloved gowned angels risking their lives to save mine won't be able to keep me here. Say, this is the last breath of my last poem, will of my last thoughts. I have witnessed massive swarms of fireflies grace my garden like never before. Drawn to the air, cleansed of our arrogant greed, their glow a flashback to the time before us, omen of earth without us, a reminder we're never immune to nature. I say this might be the end we've always needed to begin again. I say this may be the end to let us hope to heal, to evolve, reach the stars. Again, I'll say, heal, evolve, reach, and become the stars that became us, whether or not this is or is not our end. Thank you everyone for those amazing readings. To continue having such inspirational art brought to you through our online and print magazine, as well as our riffs and fundraising book parties, please consider making a donation. To do so, click on the donate link on the chat room. Now it is my great pleasure to introduce our closing two jazz musicians, Roy Nathanson and Aidan Scriminger. Roy Nathanson has had a varied career as a saxophonist, composer, band leader, poet, actor, and teacher. After playing with the Lounge Lizards, Nathanson co-founded the Jazz Passengers, with whom he has toured and recorded for over 30 years. His second book of poetry, Conversations and Other Songs, has just been released by Mad Hat Press. Aidan Scrimmager on keyboards this evening is a musician based in Brooklyn, New York, 
was influenced by a mix of jazz, American roots music, and Celtic music. He attended the New England Conservatory and has performed at venues throughout the East Coast. He currently performs with Boston-based acoustic quintet Pumpkin Bread, country band Lissy and the Jacks, and his own jazz trio. They will be performing an original piece composed by Aidan called Squall. your God cause it's cloudy and Patty's willow won't glow today yeah thank you God 
today is so cloudy. No one's got nothing, nothing more to say. You thank you, God, because it's quiet. These days been <laughs> noisy enough, huh? And if your God's just busy talking, tell your God it's quiet day. I ask my God if he's been watching. I asked her how she plans to cope. See, like yours, my God's elusive when he's not out there selling hope. Wish my God would just sell quiet, quiet down below the ground. Guess even God's tired of waiting, you know, they're waiting for that quiet ride. It's not like truth shouldn't come up sh shining. It's not like justice needs the rain. All them gods are making all that noise. The clouds gotta bless us all again. So I'm glad today is cloudy. And I'll be out there wearing that stupid looking mask. I'll be out there looking up at all that gray. Telling God to cool it, let quiet rule the day. Today is cloudy, and I'll be out there in my mask. I'll be out there looking up at all that gray, telling God to cool it, let quiet rule the day. Telling God, cool it, let quiet rule the day. Let quiet rule the day. A last predictable but important reminder in case you've forgotten, you can still click on our donate link in chat. Also on chat is a link to our book table. And in chat, you will find a link 
to the winners up in the bidding for our silent auction. Next year, we will be vaccinated and restored and meeting in person again. Imagine that. There is light ahead. I actually believe that. Meanwhile, let's continue to share our virtual but real camaraderie. Thank you from all our hearts.